So with this very basic productivity system, I think that you'll be on your way to being more organized and by extension, more productive. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Greer and it's lovely to have you here with me today. In my last video, which I'm going to have linked somewhere up here as well as in the description down below, we looked at some of the mindset shifts that need to happen before we make resolutions, set goals, and form new habits. And in that video, I mentioned that one of the reasons that we tend to fall short in our pursuit of those is that we don't have a tangible system for logging and tracking our progress. So in today's video, we're going to look at a simple and effective productivity system that's going to help you stay organized. We're going to be looking at the three basic building blocks that I think are the backbone of a good product activity system and I'm going to show you the specific tools that I use to implement each of those building blocks. Before we get into today's video, I'd like to remind you that if you've been enjoying the content on this channel, do remember to subscribe as that helps me greatly and it means that we as a community can have an even wider reach here on the platform. Now, most of us are busy people. We have jobs, we have classes to get to, families to take care of, deadlines to meet. What happens sometimes is that the details of how we're going to accomplish our goals can get mixed up with everything else that we have going on in our lives. We don't want to solely rely on our brains to remember all of that information for us. So I think it's smart to outsource that process to a system that is efficient and reliable as well as easily accessible. So these are the three basic building blocks that I think should be the inspiration behind our productivity system. The first is our what. What is it that I want to accomplish? The second is our when. When am I going to work on that goal or that task? The third is your how. How am I going to accomplish this goal or task? What is it that I need to do? And to help us answer those questions, these are the corresponding components. To answer the question what, we're going to have a to-do list or a task management tool. To answer when, we're going to have a calendar. And to answer how, we're going to have some kind of note-taking tool. Let's break that down, shall we? I think that a to-do list is the cornerstone of a good productivity system. Essentially, a to-do list is a listed representation of all the tasks that we need to complete. Now, your to-do list can be as simple as a piece of paper, a sticky note, maybe you have a journal that you use to write down all the tasks that you need to complete. I do appreciate the good old pen and paper method. I do use that method from time to time. But for the most part, I prefer to have my to-dos stored digitally as it means that I can have easier access to them. And that's an important requirement for the to-do list. It needs to be easily accessible and readily available. You don't want to have to go rifling through papers or scrambling for a pen every time something comes to your head. And if we're talking about apps, there's a plethora of apps out there that can be used for that purpose. Some of them come natively on your devices, so you probably don't even have to go downloading anything new. On iOS, for example, the Notes app has a very simple to-do list capability. My personal favorite app for making to-do lists and managing my tasks is called TickTick. Let's take a look at it. TickTick is a feature-packed application that helps you to track and manage your tasks. Its design, I think, is clean and minimal. The app provides different task views such as today, next 7 days, and inbox and allows you to create several different lists based on your needs. It's relatively easy to create a new task in TickTick. The app uses natural language processing, which means that it identifies keywords to understand when a task is due. Where I think TikTok sets itself apart from some other applications is that it's not just a task management app. There's a built-in calendar that can be useful for planning or if you just prefer to view your tasks that way. There's an Eisenhower matrix which shows you your tasks based on urgency and importance. A Pomodoro timer. Now, if you're not familiar with the Pomodoro method, it's essentially a time management method where you do stretches of work in 25 minute intervals and then break for 5 minutes. There's a stopwatch, and there's even a very handy habit tracker, which is great for those of you who are looking to develop new habits. You can choose from pre-created habits, such as drinking water, waking up early, or reading. And if none of those are useful to you, you can, of course, create your own. There are also some other cool features that aren't part of TikTok's main functioning, but that are nice to have. You can earn badges based on completion of tasks, so there's that gamified aspect to it. And you can also see statistics about your task completion. 
TikTik also comes with lots of different widgets which makes it easy for you to quickly add or review those tasks either in the widget section of your device or on the home page. The app syncs seamlessly across all of my devices and is available as far as I know on iOS, iPadOS, Mac, Android, and Windows. There's both a free and paid version of TikTik. Now, I started using the app somewhere around 2017, but I only updated to the paid version last year when I realized just how much value I was getting out of it. I enjoy the extra features of the paid plan, but I think that the basic free plan is more than enough for most people. Now you may find that you don't need something as sophisticated or something with as many features as TikTik. So what about just regular simple lists? For things like groceries or miscellaneous lists that come up spontaneously that you don't necessarily need to schedule, I use Google Keep. Google Keep is another app that's very easy to use and free. There's a very minimal layout and you can either have a card view or a list view. Within a note, you can implement checkboxes for your to-dos, and you also have the ability to add photos, images, drawings, and even voice recordings. There's also the option to set reminders, as well as create labels for better organization. Some other to-do list and task management applications that I have heard good things about and that I'd recommend are Todoist, Microsoft To-Do, Google Tasks, which is great if you're already in the Google ecosystem. And then of course, like I mentioned before, the native application that already comes on your phone or your tablet or your computer. Now, Todoist is very similar to TikTik. If we're talking about the free version of an application, I prefer TikTik because I think TikTik has more features available in its free version. But of course, it's up to you to decide which one you prefer to use. I think that the calendar is really important for giving us a visual representation of the things that we have going on in our life on a day-to-day -day basis. It helps with planning and even time blocking, which essentially is dividing our days into blocks of time so that we can prevent any conflicts that might come up. Of course, many of us already use calendars to log events that we need to keep track of, and I think it'll also be pretty helpful for you to create a custom calendar for a new habit that you're trying to form. My calendar application of choice is Google calendar. Google Calendar is great if you're already in the Google ecosystem. This is another service that's free to use, the interface is very intuitive, and it uses a modern design language. With Google Calendar, you can have several different views of your schedule so that you can see what you have coming up, whether it's on that day or within the week or month or even the year. You also have color-coded calendars to differentiate between different types of events. You can add calendars by browsing for ones that are pre-created, or you can even create your own if you wanted to. Google Calendar also integrates with other services like Google Keep and Google Tasks, and it supports a very wide range of third-party add-ons. Some other calendar applications that I would recommend are Apple Calendar, which comes free on Apple devices, Microsoft Outlook Calendar, as well as Fantastical. Now, Fantastical is a paid application, but I think it has lots of useful features if you're willing to pay the price. So now that you know what it is that you like to work on, what goal it is that you like to achieve, as well as when exactly you're going to be working on that goal, the specific days and times, I think it's useful to have a central place to just take notes and jot down how exactly you're going to accomplish that goal. You know, what are the specific things that you're going to be doing? What resources are you going to be using? You know, any advice that you've been given, a central place to keep all of that information. My personal favorite tool for doing that is Notion. Now I have mentioned Notion in previous videos and as I said before, it is a workspace that allows you to create tables, notes, databases, pages, and customize them to your liking. Notion is highly customizable and it scales to fit your needs. So it can be as simple or as complex as you need it to be. You could use Notion to list out your goals and then with a Kanban board, move them around based on their status, whether they're done, being done, or have been completed. Maybe you wanted somewhere to keep track of your workouts. You could easily create a tracker within Notion with different stats about your workout, such as the type of workout and the duration. Or maybe you wanted somewhere to store the new recipes that you're learning, 
Well, you guessed it. You could easily do that in Notion so that you have all your recipes in one place that you can always refer to. With useful features like the Notion Web Clipper, you could save information that you find online to your Notion workspace. So for example, if you were doing some research on books that you could read to be more mindful and you came across this Business Insider article, you could save this article to your books page in Notion so that you could have it to refer to later. There are templates so that you don't need to build your own if you're not particularly interested in spending time doing that and it helps that there's a large Notion community that constantly posts new templates, helps with troubleshooting and shares tips for making the tool easier to use. There is a free plan which I use and there are paid plans as well and I think that if you're just using Notion for personal reasons then I think the free plan would be sufficient for you as well. With this very basic productivity system, I think that you'll be on your way to being more organized and by extension more productive. I want to say that this is just a guide and of course you can tweak this system to your liking. You may find that you don't even need those three components, maybe you find one app that does everything that you needed to do. And that's perfect, as long as this is a system that you're comfortable with and that you're actually going to use. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like and subscribe. Comment and let me know if you plan on trying out this system and if you already have a system of your own, what are some of the apps and tools that you use? I'm always looking for good recommendations. So take good care and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.